Hello there, welcome to another video tutorial on factoring strategies here. This is the second video in a series on factoring. In this video we're going to be looking at trinomial factoring. In the last video lesson we looked at common factoring. Uh, this type of factoring is definitely a step up from common factoring. So you may want to take a peek at the common factoring video lesson just to make sure that you're up to speed on factoring. So we're going to look at two different types of trinomial factoring. The first is when we have a quadratic relationship where the a value or the coefficient in front of x squared is equal to 1. All the examples we're going to look at on this slide will not have a coefficient in front. It'll just be a 1. And if the coefficient in front is not 1, you've got a totally different monster. We're going to look at some examples of those in a minute or so once we complete these examples. The process for trinomial factoring, uh, there's a couple different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you a few. One is sort of lengthy. The, the other is kind of a shortcut. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take a look at your, your trinomial and you need to find two numbers which add to get the b term. So the b term is the coefficient in front of x and you need to also have those numbers multiply to get the c term. So the c term is always the term without the, the x. So just the constant on the end. Okay so you need to think in your head what are two numbers that add to get 5 while also multiplying to get 4. I find it easiest to start with the numbers that multiply to get the c value and then just sort of pick the, the ones that also happen to add to get the b value. So Thinking about numbers that multiply to get 4, first one that comes to mind might be 2 and 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, but 2 plus 2 is not 5. So 2 and 2 do not satisfy our condition. Uh, so we're going to move on to different factors. So let's, let's consider 1 and 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. And it's, as it turns out, 1 plus 4 is also 5. Okay, so we need, to, we need to add to get 5 and multiply to get 4. And as it turns out, 1 and 4 are the magic numbers which satisfy those two conditions. What you're going to do is you're going to take your middle term, your b term, and you're going to break that up into two separate terms using the numbers that you chose from the first step. Okay, so that's, that's what we call decomposition. This strategy sometimes referred to as factoring by decomposition, and that's why. You take your, your b term and you break it up or you decompose it into two terms to determine by using that first process that I showed you. Okay, so if you check here, 1x plus 4x is 5x. Those are like terms. We can add those together. So we haven't really changed our expression at all. We've just sort of factored it into something else. So the next step, what we need to do is we need to take a look at our expression, and we want to group our four terms based on their similarities. So the immediate similarities between these two terms, for instance, are that they both have a 4 in common. All right, so I'm going to group those two. They're pretty similar. These two guys are similar. They both have an x in common. So we want to group into two groups of two. The reason that we do that is because we're going to, we're going to common factor our groups based on their similarities. So this first group here, if, you, if you've watched the video on common factoring, if you've got some familiarity with common factoring, you know I can take one x term and factor it out of each of these two terms. And when I do that, I end up with x times x plus 1. And I can do the same thing for the second group, but I can common factor out of 4. Okay, so you'll see that I common factored it a 4 and I've got an x plus 1. Now, if you've done this correctly, something kind of interesting happens. You'll end up with a common factor in each term inside your brackets. And again, I did an example of this sort of factoring in uh, the previous video lesson, so maybe take a peek at that if you're starting to feel a little lost. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to common factor out x plus 1 out of each of these terms. Okay, so when I do that, I take the x plus 1 out and I write it in front of my expression. You just kind of picture removing the x plus 1, what you're left with is x plus 4. And that's what goes in my other set of brackets. Okay, now this is a nice factored trinomial. We factor this trinomial, we ended up with two binomials being multiplied. We can check our answer just by using the FOIL method of expanding binomials. There's also a video lesson that I've done on that, so you might want to take a peek just for some review. If I do FOIL the, these two binomials, I will end up with my original trinomial. Okay, so you can always check your answer with these factoring problems. Okay, so another, another example I want to look at here. When you're approaching factoring problems, it's important that you always common factor first if possible. So taking a look at this one, immediately you're, you're probably thinking, well, you know what, this doesn't really apply here because our A value is not 1, our A value is 2. Well, you're not wrong, but if you take a look, you could common factor out 2 out of each of these terms. So that's the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to just take it, that 2 and I'm going to common factor out of each of those terms. So I end up with this expression in brackets. 
Okay, now this is definitely a trinomial where a, the a value is one. So I'm definitely gonna be able to use the same strategy here. You'll remember, I need to find two numbers that add to get the coefficient in front of x, including the sign, so negative two. And those numbers must also multiply to get negative three. Okay, don't forget the signs, that's very important. So there's a negative there. So if you think in your head, remember start with two numbers and multiply to get negative three. So for instance, negative three times one would work. And if we check negative three plus one, you'll see that we also get negative two. So those must be our magic numbers. Now I'm gonna show you a, a quick shortcut here. Uh, just hopping back over to our other example. You might notice that our binomials here, x plus one and x plus four, the numerical portion of my binomial happens to be the same as the original numbers that I chose at the beginning of my problem. Now, you might think, oh, that's just a coincidence, but as it turns out, that's going to be the case in every single time. As long as you're factoring when your A value is one, you'll always see this pattern. Okay, so I can kind of just use that conclusion and assume that my factored form of this trinomial would be x minus three times x plus one. I've got those numbers from the numbers that I just chose. And this two sort of just comes along for the ride. All right, so the next type of trinomial factoring, this is what I call tricky trinomial factoring. Different process entirely, mainly because of the fact that our A value is not one. The first step is sort of similar, but there is an extra sort of little added step involved. Uh, so it says find two numbers which add to get B. So that's the same, same process, right? We're gonna find two numbers that add to get the coefficient in front of X, which happens to be one in, in this example. I'm going to find two numbers that also multiply to get the product of our coefficient in front of x squared and our c value, the number at the end of our trinomial. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little bit of multiplication here, but it won't be anything too complicated. So hopefully at this point you've kind of understood what's expected when finding these two numbers. Uh, it, it, is, it does take a little bit of work sometimes, but remember, I, like I said, always start with the, the multiplication. Um, you know, two numbers that multiply to get negative 12. One of them has to be negative because it's a negative number. Let's try negative three and four. If I multiply those two numbers, I get negative 12. If I add those two numbers, I certainly get one. So negative three and four are the numbers that I'm looking for in this case. Once you've identified your numbers, you can proceed with this method. I'm gonna decompose our B term into two terms using the numbers that we came up with in the previous step. The rest of this factoring method is exactly the same as, as the original factoring by decomposition that I showed you in the last example. Okay, so again, we wanna group our terms based on their similarities. I'm gonna say 4x and negative two are probably gonna be more similar than any other pair. 6x squared and negative 3x will be similar. You can see I've got 3x in common in each of these terms. So I take a 3x out. Let's say I've got a two common in between these two terms and factor that out. You can see I've got a new common factor inside my brackets. Remember that should happen if you've done this correctly. I'm gonna common factor out two X minus one and what's left is three X plus two. Okay, so that's what's gonna be in my brackets along with my common factor of two X minus one. So that's decomposition for tricky trinomials. Exactly the same process, except you're finding your two numbers. You've gotta multiply your A and C values. Now, I'm gonna show you another shortcut uh, for tricky trinomials. This one is very strange. I'm not gonna go into the details of why it works. It's definitely gonna save you a lot of time. So this is sort of like the advanced tricky trinomial factoring method. Uh, like a disclaimer, this one is very strange. So just beware. So this method starts exactly the same. We wanna find two numbers that add to get our, our B term, which in this case will be negative one. Also multiplying to get negative four. Negative four and three work in this case, and you can check that on your own. What you're gonna do is you're gonna just sort of off to the side. You wanna write your two numbers that you just came up with, so negative four and three. Next thing you wanna do is divide those two numbers by the coefficient in front of x squared, so that is your a value, right? So you can see here I've divided by two numbers by three. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you've reduced these new fractions to lowest terms. So negative four over three, that one's fine. Uh, three over three, we can reduce that to one over one. I know it's one, but in, in our weird factoring method here, it's important to leave these things as fractions. So we've got two fractions here. We've got negative four over three, and we've got one over one. Okay, so this next part is very bizarre, uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna take fractions that you just came up with and rotate them 90 degrees. 
So you can picture if I, if I just picked up this negative four and put it next to my three, you can see I've got a three and a negative four. Uh, and then in over on this side, I've got a one and a one next to each other. As it turns out, for some bizarre reason, these are your factors. So I've got three, negative four. I can just slap an x next to the three, so three x minus four. I've got one and one, so I've got x plus one. Notice the sign is important here, so I put my negative with my, my four. This one was positive. And that's this bizarre factoring strategy. I came across this in my studies of factoring back in grade 10. I had a teacher who sort of just showed me this, and I've used it ever since. It'll save you oodles of time. If you go back and do this using decomposition and just compare it to the time it takes using the shortcut, uh, it is much, much quicker. And again, you can check, if you don't believe me, you can check using FOIL just to see that this does, in fact, uh, provide you with your original trinomial. Okay, so that's the end of this little factoring tutorial. Uh, this was trinomial factoring. I'm going to post one more video on difference of squares factoring, so stay tuned for that one. Factoring is something you're going to use throughout the rest of your math career, so it's really important that you develop a strong sense of factoring. All right, thanks for watching.